Hello my darlings, it's we here, and today I finally bring you another Kirishima fanfiction. Also I think I'm a little too close to the mic, I saw the spikes just now. Anyways, I hope this is a slightly better distance. Anyways, anyways, uh, before we get right into the story, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon and a merch store. I would greatly appreciate it if you could check them out and maybe donate something or buy something. However, there's the high chance that you don't have uh, money. That is fine, that is perfectly understandable, especially in the current situation. In that case, my darlings, I would simply like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment anything down below. How about, how about you comment your favorite part of the story? Yeah, that sounds like something you would do, probably. <laughs> Anyways, if you're new here and uh, haven't clicked it yet, Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful, darling, doll army. And remember to join the Discord. Link in the description. Lastly, if you 100% think I'm worth it, I would like to ask you to share my videos around. Uh, post them on Discord, post them in your Skype group if you're still using Skype for some reason. Um, post them on Twitter, anything really, just share them around. Do the one thing YouTube doesn't want to do, so that Susan pays me. <laughs> uh, sorry for begging, but if you could do that and could interest any person in watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate that. Now, let's get right into the story, okay? Enjoy. And ta-ta, my lovelies. There aren't many secrets you had. Most of them were little dirty secrets your friends told you. And you were completely fine in keeping those. After all, your own secret was far worse than that of any other of your classmates. And if you weren't an introvert, probably none of them would have actually shared them with you. To them it was probably something like therapy. It had all started with Mina. While she didn't approach you herself, due to an unfortunate accident you witnessed her committing it. The pink-skinned mutation court user was using a fake ID to purchase various items, such as alcohol. Of course, after confronting her, she begged you to not tell anyone. And like a good Samaritan, you kept it under lock and key. What you didn't know at the time was that Mina talked. Not about her ID, but about the fact that you were a trustworthy individual when it came to the personal issues of people that were either illegal or morally wrong. Mostly morally wrong, though. Momo had a gambling addiction. She could hide from pretty much anyone thanks to her wealth. Uraka was sometimes stealing from the local candy shop. And Jiro had a crush on Denki. A crush she desperately wanted to keep secret for some reason. Even some of the boys had told you their deepest secrets and desires. You were just happy that no one asked you about what you were hiding. That is until now. You were spending the day with your recently acquired boyfriend, the ever so manly Kirishima. While it wasn't love at first sight, for you it clearly was for him. Since the day you first met during the introductory exams for UA, he tried almost desperately to be close to you. How you stayed oblivious to it, you didn't know. One day, however, a beautiful spring day in your second year, he had finally brought up the courage to confess to you. 
you yourself had started developing feelings for him during the latter half of your first year, where you and Tim had spent a lot of time together learning and training, so it was an instant yes to the entire ordeal. Only your parents seemed to have a problem with it at first, primarily your mother, but your dad eventually warmed up to the idea. There was just one problem separating you from the perfect high school romance. And it was a soul-crushing reality check. A secret both dark and gross you had. That included both yourself and your twin sister. The day had been a really good day. You and your boyfriend had a shopping date. Of course, your adorably manly boyfriend needed to flex with his sparse wealth and brought you anything you only did so much as longingly look at. Not just that, he had also demanded to carry all bags by himself. To which you chuckled. You aren't just manly, aren't you? Nope, he boasted. I'm also gentle manly as heck. You blushed. He never cursed around you. And despite carrying three large bags filled with candy, sweets, sodas, and plush toys, all just meant for you, he still somehow found a way to hold your hand. Kishima's hand was large. Warm and calloused, probably from his quirk, but it had a soft quality to it. Being touched by it made your insides feel hot, like liquid. Right, liquid. With a slight glint of panic, you casually let go of his hand, you scratched the back of your head. And then you let your arm simply dangle, leaving his hand alone. His eyes wander to you for a split second, but you didn't notice. A few hours went by and you returned to the dorms. Once you two entered the empty common room, he finally spoke up. Babe. I want to talk about something. You felt a bit of sweat form on your forehead. Any conversation that started like this was about to turn sour. Let's go to your room, alright? He quietly followed you to your room and sat on your bed after putting down the bags of stuff he got you. Is there something wrong with me? He asked directly. And you gave him a questioning look. What I mean is... He sighed. I get that we shouldn't and can't do any adult stuff. I mean, we're still kids, but... You know... He paused. When I confessed to you and you said I love you too, I was kind of hoping we would do more than just go on dates. I mean, we haven't even kissed yet, but then again, I could have just watched too many movies. He chuckled. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. You took a deep breath and looked at Kirishima. There's a reason as to why it's just... Really embarrassing. You bit your lower lip. And he raised an eyebrow. Do you have feelings for someone else? Is it Dinky? What? No! You exclaimed. Then it's Bakugo. Of course it's Bakugo. I'm not cheating on you, Kiri. The serious look on his face turned into a calm smile. And it can't be that bad. Whatever it is, we can deal with it. You inhale deeply. 
Are you really about to do this? It's my mutation, okay? His smile turned into confusion, and he looked you up and down before pointing between your legs. Does it have teeth? Is that why? You blushed. Pervert! No, wait! It doesn't have teeth! You want to smack him. Just tell me then. If I keep guessing, I'd probably say something worse than that. For a moment you went quiet. This isn't my body. The moment you said it, it felt like a heavy rock was lifted off of your shoulders. What do you mean? This body is my twin sister's body. I'm just a passenger. The dumbfounded look he gave you was almost worth the anxiety you felt in this moment. Explain. You sighed. My dad's mutation. He has a liquefied body. Essentially, he's a slime. And when him and my mom got together, they made us. But no one knew that my mom had twins. In fact, I didn't even know. Judging by the look on his face, he began to understand. When me and my sister were born, I was in her head. And I thought, I am my sister. Until, well, we both turned four. That's when we had an examination. And they found me. Your heart sank, and a tear began to run down your cheek. Turns out that I'm a slime, like my dad. And I entered my twin sister's human body while still inside of my mother's womb. The doctors think that this is how I survived until birth, that I was unwillingly feeding off of my own sister and... And you stopped. It was difficult to talk about this. You felt like a monster. Eventually he stood up from your bed. Please don't! You felt his arms wrap around your body. Leave. You finished. This is like some... Really weird body horror flick. But it's fine, I think. He muttered into your ear. You were glad that he believed you. Is it okay if I guess the rest of the story? You nodded. And remaining in this position, he continued. Because you're fed off of your sister's body, she's brain dead. Her body functioning completely normal, but there's no conscience to speak of. So your parents kept it a secret from the world, kept pretending nothing is wrong, that nothing happened. Right? Again, you nodded. He was right. I don't know if you're hijacking a quirk too, or if this body snatching is your quirk, and hers is the telekinesis that you have, but... Honestly, this doesn't matter to me. He paused. It would, honestly, if our circumstances were different. If I would read about your quirk, and not know you personally, to be honest, I, 
I think I would be afraid of you. His words were supposed to be comforting. We knew it. But they stung like a knife. He slowly let go of you to look at your face. But I'm not afraid. I trust you. I love you. Doesn't matter whose body you're in. Suddenly he chuckled. And somehow it felt hopeful. <laughs> so this is why you're afraid of personal contact, huh? You nodded and whimpered. When my sister's body... When... When my body gets to warm, I start... Vomiting myself out. He scratched his chin. Huh, so that's why you only eat cold food, so huh? You sniffled. Yeah. I want to see you. He said with a determined look on his face. What? He grinned. I want to see you. Outside of his body, I mean. You scratched the back of your head. I mean, I would like to show you. That's the least I can do. I mean, you have no reason to believe me. It's just I don't know how. After a brief pause, you said, I never, like, left her body. And I wouldn't know how to get back into it. Besides, I don't even know if I can be solid enough to move and stuff. You know? What if I leave her body and I'm just a puddle and I can never go back and... <sighs> you sighed in horror. But his grin became wider. Okay, sorry, but... Okay. Honestly, this was half a joke and half, well, being serious and curious, but I get you. Again, he chuckled. So this is your dirty little secret, huh? He frowned and wiped away the tears that were still running down your face. Everyone keeps telling me their secrets. And they aren't even... Half as gross as mine. You looked into his eyes. Please tell this to no one, okay? If this goes out, people will hate me. Be afraid of me. Think I'm a monster. He answered with another hug. And you coughed. Your body was heating up too much, and you gently pushed him away. He made a confused noise before noticing that something blue was starting to come out of your nose. Um, is that... You nodded. <laughs> Sorry, um... <clears throat> I think we will figure something out eventually. He grinned and sat back down on your bed. I keep your secret, okay? I keep it until you're ready to tell more people. I love you. And with that, he gave you the biggest smile you had ever seen. <laughs>